Hello, welcome back to my channel. So, I hope you'll don't mind this video is gonna be formatted differently than like my other commentary videos are. What I normally do is, you know, I go through pretty thoroughly, I I'd like to think um, about, you know, why someone is being talked about, um, the bad thing they did, give personal commentary along the way, and then more towards the end of the video is when I like to dig deeper into it and talk about, you know, the larger social issues surrounding the controversy, um, and I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna do that in this video. Um, I'm not gonna go in super deep about what's going on with David and the vlog squad because a lot of people have already talked about it and have been talking about it. And I feel like if every commentary or drama channel just talks about, you know, the same thing, which is just David bad, um, it becomes a bit redundant if that makes sense. So what I'm instead going to be doing today is giving a more generalized explanation of what's happening just for context and then the rest of this video is just going to be personal commentary on the situation because there's a lot more to be said other than David bad in my opinion. If you want a deep dive, Haley Elizabeth made a great video on David. I know this is the second commentary video in a row where I'm shouting her out. I just really like her videos. I think she's doing really good. Um, if you, you know, don't want a deep dive, if you just want like a more cut and dry, this is what's going on, this is why people are talking about David. Um, Angelica Oles has made like two or three videos at this point, um, keeping everyone up to date with what's happening, so you can watch those. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first part, the general overview. David Dobrik is a YouTuber and creator, I guess, of the Vlog Squad. Um, he had a decent following on Vine, but he really blew up on YouTube with his vlog and I put vlogs in quotations because they weren't really vlogs. It was more just a bunch of scripts compressed into a four minute video made to be like, whoa, my life is so crazy. But recently him and the vlog squad have been under fire because of the toxic work environment that David created, like pressuring his friends into doing things for his videos, making them feel more like props than people, specifically the women of the vlog squad, um, people of color such as Seth, or Big Nick who has dwarfism, you know, etc. The main thing that is causing David's empire to crumble though is the allegations of SA and against member of the vlog squad and David's former best friend Dom. A lot of members of the vlog squad, including David, have made videos and tweets regarding the situation and David has lost 13 brand sponsorships and like cooperations and partnerships and stuff um, at the time I'm writing it. I don't know if it's more. I know that you know, when I checked to write the script, it was 13, and then he also had to pull out his investments in Dispo, which is the app he was working on. So that's that. That's the compressed rundown, so now we're gonna get into the actual conversation. I've seen a lot of people not necessarily, like, defend David, um, but I've seen the question getting asked a little bit, um, why is David getting cancelled when Dom is the one that's being accused? And my answer to that is because David allowed it. That's not to say that Dom would have never done what he did if it weren't for David, but David is, in my opinion, a very big enabler uh, because he used what happened that night for a bit in the vlog and he turned the entire thing into a joke that he could profit off of. But going even earlier than that night in that vlog, David has always had an atmosphere that encouraged and enabled shitty actions and behaviors. This is nothing new in David's content. Going back to vlogs from years ago, there's jokes about blackface, jokes about women, groping women, mocking Asian people, things that are generally seen as bad, but when David and the vlog squad did it, nobody questioned it. And I think that a reason that that was never questioned is because of parasocial relationships. YouTubers tend to act and talk to their audience as if they're friends, and I think that David did that more than other YouTubers usually do. He allowed fans to know where he lived. Like, I remember a vlog from a few years ago where he was, like, standing on his balcony, and then, like, he was filming below to, like, a group of a bunch of his fans and they were just like talking and joking around and stuff. He's, you know, allowed fans to be in his vlogs and use them for bits. I'm pretty sure he's allowed fans like into his house straight up. I think people, when they think of David, they don't think, oh, that's that YouTuber I like. They think, oh, that's David, as if they know him personally. And that is one reason that nobody really second glanced David whenever something not 
really socially accepted would happen in his videos. Another thing that played into this is the fact that nobody in the vlog squad ever disagreed with David in like a serious manner. Whenever a joke about race or Big Nick's height or derogatory statements about Corinna or Gabby Hanna were like said in the video, everyone laughed, even the people that were the butt end of the joke. And if you were questioning if something like that was appropriate or okay to say, and then you see everyone laughing as if it's fine, then you start to think, okay, well, you know, nobody has an issue with this in the video, nobody has an issue with this in the comments, maybe I'm over reacting. Maybe this isn't bad. And then when it comes out a few years later that, oh, these jokes were actually not okay with the person that was getting made fun of, for example, Seth, people didn't take it seriously for a long time. It wasn't until Seth went on to, um, onto the H3 podcast uh, that people started to see the cracks in the facade of the vlog squad. And I think another reason that David went unchecked for years is because of the age of his audience. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that his audience is like majority children, such as someone like Jay or Logan Paul, but I do think based on personal experience that his audience is on the younger side, like younger teenagers. For instance, when I was a Vlog Squad fan, because I, yes, I was a huge fan, I had so much merch, I dressed as David for like a spirit week in school for like the dress as a celebrity day. Um, he inspired me to like want to be a YouTuber. Um, but at that time I was like 15 to 16 and eventually I grew out of him and that style of content because haha ha, Nick is short and haha ha, Karina has boobs can only be funny for so long. I think that David is interesting in this aspect though because for YouTubers you either have an audience that grows out of you or you have an audience that grows with you but I don't think that David really had either. People didn't grow out of him despite the fact that they stopped watching him because they still followed him and supported him even if they didn't watch the videos anymore because he was just David Dobrik. But I also think people didn't grow with him because growing with someone implies that he had, you know, growth and change and his content shifted in some way and I don't think that that happened either. And I think, you know, even though 15 year olds aren't babies or anything, they're more easily impressionable than a 19 or a 20 year old. And if a 15 year old is watching these videos of people who they adore joke about things that aren't okay to joke about, they aren't gonna say anything because they aren't gonna go against or speak out against someone that they idolize. And people that were brave enough to speak about their experiences or how they think that there's some darker undertones to the world of David Dobrik, they were massively shit on online and, you know, if it was a YouTube video, it was bombed with dislikes. So we now have this atmosphere around David Dobrik that's made up of, in my opinion, an unhealthy parasocial relationship um, desensitization, because again, the things that people are now having an issue with have been there the whole time, and I think that as previously mentioned, seeing the vlog squad laugh about things that you normally can't laugh about desensitized his audience of teenagers. Um, and also victim blaming and an environment where people didn't feel safe to go against David, whether it be because they were afraid of getting harassed or dislike bombed, or whether it be someone in the squad, such as Seth, who let things happen to him without saying something because at the time David was helping him start and grow his career. Going back to the original question of why is David getting canceled when Dom is the one that did it, Okay, I've talked about David, let's talk about Dom now. Aside from the fact that Dom is a vile person, I also think that he's straight up just a coward. He should be getting the same amount of shit that David is getting, but he instead has gone completely radio silent and is letting his friends now take the fall for him. So far, David, Jeff, Carly, and Aaron, they've all talked about what's going on, and the last two weren't even there the night that it happened. And don't get me wrong, you know, David and Jeff should be talking about it, but you know who should also be talking about it? The guy that was accused of rape. Dom made a video two weeks ago called Addressing the Drama, and it's honestly kind of pathetic. When I watched it, there were five ads on it. One pre-roll, which meaning it plays before the video. Three mid-rolls, meaning, you know, mid-video. And then one post-roll where it plays after. 
And most of the mid-rolls were unskippable, by the way. I don't know if he can control that, um, but that's just what I noticed. Aside from the fact that he literally does not even talk about the allegations, here are some other things I had issues with. He does this boo-hoo bit towards the beginning where he talks about how after the squad had become more successful, um, David stopped hanging out with Dom as much and instead chose to hang out with more popular people and how Dom felt like he didn't really have a core group of friends, which when this is in what's supposed to be an apology video, that comes off as just a manipulation tactic. He also talks about his behavior, refers to it as um, childish and stubborn. That's when he's referencing like his racist behavior, but then he goes and he says like, oh, it was all just jokes or I didn't understand the severity of it. So it's kind of like, he almost takes responsibility, but then he doesn't. He then, when talking about the situation where Seth did not consent to making out with Jason Nash, he goes on this weird side tangent of like how, you know, oh, well, I'm fine with my sexuality and if I had to kiss a dude in the vlogs, it didn't bother me because I'm built different is basically what he said. His video really is just 15 minutes of deflection and very poor attempts at apologizing to Seth, Nick, and Karina. The last thing in his video, which I find funny in like not an actual funny way and you know, the bad funny, um, is that towards the end he talks about accountability, which is ironic considering he does nothing but deflect and manipulate and straight up not talk about the fact that he's been accused of rape someone. And you know what? Maybe he can't talk about it for legal reasons. I don't know if the women have already pressed charges or if they intend to. Um, and I don't know the ins and outs of the law, but if that's the reason, then why are Jeff and David talking about it when they technically are accomplices? Again, I don't know how the law works that thoroughly, so I could be wrong, but it does feel like he's not talking about it, not because of legal reasons, but because he's purposely leaving it out. The next thing I want to talk about is how I've seen a lot of people compare David to Shane Dawson, and I do see the similarities, but I don't 100% agree. I think it's a similar situation of the content was there the whole time, the warnings were there the whole time, but it's now only being talked about. But I do think if we're comparing David to a person, I see a lot of similarities to what happened with Ellen. If you don't know, about seven months ago, Ellen was called out for her enablement of toxicity in the workplace and how she was aware of things happening, such as harassment, um, but she didn't do anything about it. People were upset at the staff that was doing the harassment, sure, yeah, but the outrage was directed at Ellen uh, for the fact that this is something that had apparently been happening for years and that she was aware of, but she did nothing about. There was also personal issues with Ellen, such as her rudeness and entitlement, similar to how there's personal issues with David, such as his sexism and mockery of people of color. I think comparing situation to situation, yes, David and Shane's situations are similar. But I think comparing David to Shane is incorrect because of the fact that the issues with Shane were with Shane entirely. Whereas in David's case, it's more like, yes, David has his own issues, but the main reason for the outrage currently is because of his complicitness and his friends' disgusting and illegal actions. The final thing I want to talk about is just the blatant, like, damage control and the lack of sincerity in this whole situation. There's nothing that makes me think that anyone involved is sorry, and what makes me think that is David's first apology, Dom's apology, and Jeff's video where he responds to an article that he had not even read yet. He recorded a conversation between him and the author of the article without her permission, and then he leaked parts of the audio without context on purpose to make it look like he had no involvement and that the author of the article had twisted everything on purpose. Dom's video I've already talked about. Um, as for David, he made two apology videos. The first, I. I don't want to call it an apology, it just felt very insincere and deflective. The second one is similar, it is more sincere though, probably because he didn't write it, but that's just personal speculation. The only thing I'll say about David's videos, his second one specifically, is that in it he says he can't wrap his head around the fact that someone he's been friends with since high school was guilty of assault, and honestly, like, that statement is part of the problem. People will discredit, invalidate, ignore, and even like harass victims when they come forward with their stories, but they won't hold their own friends accountable when they know they're guilty because of the fact that they're friends. The only reason that David is talking about how he doesn't approve of Dom's behavior now 
is because of the backlash and because he's losing money. Not because he cares about the victims. If he did, he wouldn't have orchestrated the entire thing that night. He wouldn't have allegedly asked Jeff and Todd to go buy alcohol to give to these girls who were under the drinking age. And he wouldn't have turned the entire thing into a bit for his video for him to profit off of. To end this video, I want to say that I truly hope that everyone that's been affected by Dom, David, like really anyone in the vlog squad is able to get closure and or justice if that's what they seek. Um, and I think that this is another example of the dangers of parasocial relationships. We need to stop treating YouTubers like we know them personally or as if they're our friends. You don't know these people, you shouldn't trust these people, and people like David are not here to be your friend, they're here to make money and they don't care what they have to do to get it, and as we can see, they only show remorse when their source of income is jeopardized. So yeah, those were my thoughts on David. I don't really know what else there is to say about it. I hope honestly that he gets deplatformed, and I hope Dom does as well. It genuinely is very bothersome that he was able to put five ads on an apology video. Um, that video, at the time I watched it, has 2.2 million views. With five ads in it, most of which were unskippable, that man is making a lot of money and that's not okay. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Those were my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. Um, if you like commentary, consider subscribing because I do it a lot, even though this format of commentary isn't one that I usually do. This is more, you know, opinion and commentary based rather than a deep dive. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time I post a video, which I think, depending on when I post this video, is going to be Monday for my podcast. So, okay. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.